going on? Welcome back to another video. This is Daniel. This is going to be the first in many of the series that I will be doing about the cities that I live in as a data nomad. And in this video today, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of living in Mexico City as a data nomad. As you probably know, I've been traveling now for a a little bit over a year as a data nomad going to places and living there for months at a time or very long weeks and uh, one of the reasons why I do this is for me to be able to still have a life outside of travel you know travel can get very boring it can get uh, you can burn out from travel if you don't do it right you know a lot of people like to go uh, places like every two days or every three days I do not do that one I don't have the mental capacity to do that and two I don't have you know the the, the means to do that you know in terms of of visas and things like that. I still have to apply for a visa almost everywhere I go. So that's not very possible for me, which is kind of like a good thing at this point. So this video, we're talking about the pros and cons of Mexico City. Hope you enjoyed. Let's get right into it. So over the last one year, I've been in Mexico now for about five months cumulatively. The first time I was here, I was here for a little bit over two months. And this time I've been here over two months, going on three months maybe. And I feel like at this point, I pretty much know what I'm talking about when it comes to life in Mexico City, especially if you are a digital nomad. So let's start with the cons of living in Mexico City. Always like to end the video on a very good note. So, the cons. Mexico City, as you probably know, is the largest city in North America. I mean, bigger than New York in terms of population and in terms of land mass as well. Mexico City is home to about 9.2 million people, whereas New York is about 8.5 million maybe. But the land mass of Mexico does not really make it feel like it's that big. So even though there's a lot more people in Mexico City, it's spread out. But even then, it can feel overcrowded in some places, especially if you take public transportation. I haven't been in the public buses, but if you see those buses in rush hour, you would not want to be inside. It's so packed. So that's one of the cons of Mexico City is that it can get overcrowded. Traffic can be a nightmare if you are driving in rush hour and early in the morning or late in the evening when people are just getting out for work. Similar to just about any city, but the fact that, you know, it's a more um, slower paced lifestyle doesn't make it feel as uh, intimidating as, say, a city like New York. So, Mexico City, it's huge and it has a lot of people, so keep that in mind. Now, the second con that I see in Mexico City um, is is that being a data nomad, I find some of the places here, you know, the desired places in the city like uh, Roma Norte, Condesa, uh, a lot of those places can get expensive really fast. And that is because of the influx of people like myself, people who work for American countries, making their money in dollars and euros and Canadian dollars, and they can afford or we can afford to pay more than, say, locals who live here. And even for myself, I mean, I, I, I do not work a W-2 job. I don't work for a company. So I'm kind of like very limited when it comes to, you know, how much I make. So... I kind of have to think about my expenses before I make any decision. And for someone like me, I still find that some of these places can get expensive really fast. But some people don't have a problem paying for that. So that's one of the cons I see with Mexico City. Um, if you want to be central, if you want to be where everybody is, you will have to be, you know, shelling out a couple more bucks to pay for that, which is kind of understandable, but I still feel like it's a con. Um, you know, being a data nomad, that's one of the things that you will have to deal with. So be ready to pay those extra bucks if you want to live in the central areas of Mexico City. But what I like to do is to go outside of the city, go, you know, to uh, other parts of the city that are not very central, but, you know, still very decent. So that is, you know, what I tend to do. And with, by doing that, I get a lot of, um, you know, very great deals with Airbnb. You know, when I message them and I ask for deals, they're more than willing to do that because not a lot of people want to, you know, stay outside of these places. So, again, if you want to live in the central areas, you need to be willing to pay that extra buck to leave there. Now, let's talk about, you know, noise pollution. Um, this was something that I downplayed a lot when I was, before I came to Mexico City or even when I came here. Noise pollution here is crazy, especially if you're not used to that. If you're coming from a Western country, if you're coming from 
United States, Canada, or you know Europe, where a lot of the housing is you know soundproof and insulated, you may not have a lot of problems. But if you come to Mexico City, it gets really loud. And I downplay this a lot until I got my first Airbnb in the heart of Roma Norte. My apartment was by the street, just along the main street of Roma Norte, and there were bars and、um, you know the, the, there was a main road, a street, a bar next door across the street, and every night, you know, this is Mexico City. People party every day. People go out and enjoy themselves every day, which I don't have a problem with. But when it comes to living in the center areas, you will be experiencing a lot of noise, especially if you live in in a house that isn't like a high rise or anything like that. So I find it very, very difficult to sleep at night, and it got really, really bad that I had my booking for seven nights, but I had to move out on the fifth day. One of the things you have to keep in mind: Mexico City is really loud, but if you can find yourself. You know, in some inner roads and some inner、uh, communities, you will be having a better time. But here now, I'm in Polanco, Mexico City, and you know, here is much more quieter. And given the fact that I'm on the seventh floor, I think maybe on the eighth floor right now, it doesn't make it seem as though it's as loud as you know it actually is. But you need to keep in mind that Mexico City is loud, and if you will be coming here, that's something you have to be able to deal with. Now, let's go to the very next one, which is you know the perception of the city,、uh, Mexico. Mexico City has a bad perception, especially from Westerners who think that the city is all about crime and、uh, you know bad things happening and being extorted by the police. And I must tell you that you know that perception cannot be any further from the truth,、um, especially from you know the extortion aspect of it. Of course, being a black person, I have you know different experience than from a person who is white or you know from a different race.、Um, uh, we kind of blend in as black people, and maybe that's why I've. Never had any history or any、uh, instance of extortion by the police. I've been pulled over, been asked for money or anything like that, because maybe they just easily assume that we don't have money.、Uh, Mexico City has a bad perception, but of course, with any city, there's going to be,、uh, you know, it's going to have its own,、um, you know, its own problems. So if you come here, you want to make sure that you are, you know, very careful. You are safe at all times. You know, always, you know, be respectful of people and be respectful of the local issues and the local problems or the local. Challenges that they face. So if you come here, don't show off. Don't、uh, you know flaunt whatever it is that you got. If you got some more money, you don't need to flaunt it. If you got anything, you don't have to flaunt it. You have to know that you are coming to a place where you know people earn. Uh, considerably less than you probably make, so、uh, always keep that in mind. But the bad perception is the reason why I want to make videos like this, shed light on some of the cities around the world, and you know places like Mexico City where people might feel or have you know some opinions about. So bad perception is a con. Now let's. Talk about some of the pros of living in Mexico City.、Uh, there's a lot of pros. I'm so excited to get into this. Now, if you are a Westerner coming from the United States, coming from Europe, coming from Canada. You will be having a good time here. People tend to live like kings here because they earn considerably more. Now, if you live in Mexico City, you will be you will be having a good time because one accommodation is uh, considerably uh, you know relatively inexpensive than what you're probably used to.、Uh, back in you know the U.S., I would pay about nine hundred dollars for a basement apartment, and I would have to share a bathroom with someone. For, I mean, with another person. But the most I've ever spent in a month in Mexico City, I think about is about seven hundred dollars for a month, and That's for a one-bedroom apartment with all of the furnitures and all of that good stuff. So you will be having a good time if you are looking for accommodation here. Cost of living comes in terms of accommodation is very low. Now another pro of Mexico City is that the city is very cosmopolitan or international, if you will. There's a lot of people in Mexico City that are from you know so many other countries. You will be finding a lot of different races and different cultures here in Mexico City because it's a very big city、uh, and it's you know one of the largest in South America. America. So it's like a melting pot of different races, cultures, nationalities. So that's one thing I love about it. There's a lot of different things going on. You will find your tribe, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, or just about anything that you are. You will find your tribe here in Mexico City. And another thing I want to mention is that Mexico City has a you know solid infrastructure for remote work. So if you work remotely like myself, you will be you know finding a lot of the infrastructure to be you know pretty. Uh, convenient,、um, you know the basic.
communities are very reliable. We talk about internet, talk about water, electricity, uh, cold water, hot water. All of these things are very easy to find in Mexico City. I was um, having a conversation with my friend the other day, and he was surprised when you know I started telling him all of these things. It was like. Is electricity constant in Mexico? I'm like, yeah, we get 24 hours electricity here. You know, how about the apartments? Are they good? I'm like, well, I'm living in the best apartment, a better apartment than I used to live when I was in the United States. So, so these are some of the things that I, you know, you will enjoy when it, I mean, when you come to Mexico City. Uh, you know, basic amenities, like I said, they are very, I mean, reliable. And another thing is accessibility. Now, Mexico City is one of the only countries that were very open uh, during, you know, the, you know, the pandemic. Uh, you know, the, during the COVID times, uh, Mexico City was pretty open. The only thing you needed was uh, a PCR test before you came here. Or well, sometimes you didn't even need a PCR test. So you needed was a proof of vaccination. And that was really good for a lot of people, especially for me when I was deciding on where to go. I came here, you know, with only uh, my PCR test and I was able to get my six months. And I stayed here for two months and I came back again. And that was a decision that a lot of people made as well. So Mexico City is very accessible to most Westerners. You come here, you get a 180 days visa on arrival. And even if you're a green card, like my, I mean, green card older like myself, even if you're not a U.S. citizen, you only have your green card, you will be able to get your 180 day visa on arrival in Mexico City. So if that's where you are, if you're not a U.S. citizen, but you live in the U.S. and you're just wanting to get away, Mexico City is just down the border and you just have to, you know, make that decision and, you know, come, come, come in enjoy life here. If you are a touristy person, you will not run out of ideas, run out of things to do. There is uh, more than 150 museums in the city alone. I'm not a museum person. I don't enjoy going to museums. I've said it maybe more than once. But if you are the type of person, you will be having a good time here in Mexico City. But I, I mean, aside from museums, there is an abundance of things that you can do outside of the city that are just uh, less than an hour drive or maybe a few hours drive away. An example is the you know the you know the floating city in uh, such Milko, where you can ride on boats, float around, you know, the canals for however many hours you want. I think I did that, and I really, really enjoyed it with some of my friends. You come with your own drinks, your own beer, whatever entertainment you've got, and you just uh, just have a good time. Just you know, have a good time floating down the canals, and there are always a lot of people there. So that's also an avenue to meet other people. So if you are a touristy person, there's a lot of things you can do. There's the pyramids, the ruins, the Aztec ruins, and you know, out just outside of the city, about one hour, an hour. And a half away. So that's something to keep in mind if you're coming here. You will not run out of ideas on things to do. Now, talk about food bars, restaurants. Of course, Mexico City is known for the food. So if you're coming here, you will be having an abundance of, you know, street food and restaurants and bars. And the food is really good. The bars are, you know, very inexpensive. For reference, um, a bottle of beer here is about 50 pesos, which is about two and a half dollars uh, if you're from the United States and maybe about a dollar fifty or a dollar seventy if you're from Europe or, uh, um, I mean, if you're from the UK. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. You can dine in a finest restaurants in the city as a westerner you know without spending too much so that is a very good thing and safety in terms of safety i found you know the city to be very safe for me i've never had any issue of harassment or extortion like i said um everything has been really smooth for me of course you know there's a bad perception of the city you know being unsafe but you know like i said if you're coming here you just have to be careful just like everyone else just like every big city it's got its own challenges um the city is also very lgbtq friendly you'll find a lot of gay bars a lot of uh, you know lgbtq communities that you can hang around if that's your thing and also if you are a guy or a young lady who's looking to date the dating scene is very active all the dating apps work bumble tinder inge you name it i've you know gone out with a few people a few lockers and you know westerners alike and you know you have your peak of you know the best one of them if i can say that and you know the city is very uh, eco-friendly green vegetation everywhere very dog friendly and very you know generally very friendly people and of course you're gonna have some challenge if you don't speak spanish here so just know a few words and if you don't that's fine people are always ready to uh to help you to assist you and if you have a you know come into the 
that kind of、uh, trouble. So, what is my verdict about Mexico City? This city has been very good to me. In fact, if I'm thinking about relocating permanently at some point in the future, it's very high on my list, and I would give Mexico City an easy seven. Out of ten, I know that might seem very generous, but believe me, that is how I feel about this city. The city is very green. It has a lot of the things that will enable a perfect work-life balance for a Gito nomad to live here and to thrive here. So, an easy seven out of ten for Mexico City. So, if you're planning or if you're thinking about coming here as a new Gito nomad, or maybe you've been here at one time, you just don't know how to feel. I want to implore you to come back here and experience it in a different way. You know, give it another try. Maybe you just like it. This time,、um, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for、um, uh, following along with me thus far. If you find it enjoyable, if you find it helpful, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Use the subscribe button down below. And if you have any questions, comments, or queries, leave them down in the comment box, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. My name is Daniel, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.